Welcome back, friends. So if you haven't been here before, I am Susan Clifton. I'm a mixed media artist in South Florida. And today we're going to create collage papers for a specific project. Sometimes you need to plan ahead for a specific type of collage. I'm planning a collage of a toucan, you know, a type of colorful bird with a very colorful beak, but they have a blackish body. And of course, when the sunlight hits it, it has sort of grays and maybe even some little, little other colors in there. And so I don't necessarily have the colors that I need to make this toucan in my stash of papers, especially the blacks, blacks and grays with a little bit of color. So I am going to today try to get colors close to what I need to make sure I have all the different shades for his beak and also for his body. So let's get it started. So here's my layout for the toucan and some stencils. So as you can see, he's got a very colorful beak and I'm going to paint the background, but he is going to be a mosaic. And I picked some new stencils that I got that have smaller patterns. I want to do something a little more subtle. So with each color that I do for this, I want to sort of almost be tone on tone. So I'm mixing my own gray because I don't want it to be just black and white gray. I want it to have a richer color. So, and it's, and I'm mixing, I mixed uh, blue, red, yellow, and a little bit of white. On camera, it looks a little bluer. On the darker one, it will look a little, not quite black, but dark. So as you see, I'm just mixing, I think I used cadmium yellow, naphthal nap, nap, red, <laughs> and um, thalo blue. And it gives me this sort of a bluish black, and it's, it's not quite black, but I don't want it to really be black black. The toucan is sort of a grayish color, but as you could see, that's, that was giving me kind of what I was going for. So now I'm doing a second one, and this time I'm mixing right on the plate. I'm using two jelly plates. The smaller one is where I'm doing a lot of my mixing depends on what I'm doing. So um, on this one, I'm going to pick up through the openings of the stencil. And then I'm going to use, I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to use the um, ghost and I'm using carbon black. The combination of carbon black and the gray should give me what exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so now I'm getting the hang of it. And these stencils kind of have like a little bit of a animal print look to them. Um, as you could see there, and this time I'm pushing through the openings with my brayer. And then I'm putting the darker and I'm mixing it with, it's like a darker gray, and I'm mixing it with a little bit of carbon black. And I'm picking up my paint that I left on the smaller jelly just so that I don't uh, have problems, but that came out perfect and I love the little spot there that had the color. So I'm mixing up some more grays. Because I'm not really sure about the grays, I have not done this before. I'm usually a bright colored person I need to have this for this bird though. It, I've got to get this right. So I want to have multiple sheets to pick from. And there's also a lot of different variation in shades of gray on his fur, so or his feathers. So I really want to make sure that I that I've got it once I start working on him. And this one came out really good too. So now I'm moving on to a different color. And this is a, um, a Lizarin Crimson. 
and I'm picking up through the openings. I'm using um, deli paper to get some of it off there because I wanted a cleaner, cleaner um, imprint. I'm waiting for it to dry a little bit. And this was um, violet oxide, which is kind of almost like a reddish burnt umber, kind of. That's how it, what it reminds me of, anyway. It's a, a browner violet, um, and I thought it would be a good mixture with the uh, alizarin crimson, and it's perfect. So now I'm going to teal. There's this one part of his beak that has a little bit of sort of light blue, little greenish tones. So I'm just creating a teal background and then I'm gonna put the other color on top. So now I'm gonna push some yellow through and this is very transparent. And I'm going to put it over that blue background. So now I'm just, there was a little bit of a ghost there. I'm laying down another color on top, a lighter color, and I think now it works better. So now we have this ghost, and I want to just pick that up. So I'm going to use Titan Buff, because also I'm still thinking, you know, these colors I might be able to use in his beak where the lightness was. But I don't want it to have a white, white background, because that would just be too dark to use in that spot. But there was this beautiful light blue area you'll see later. I'm not really sure if this is going to work. It was beautiful anyway. I'll use it someday. It won't go to waste. So anyway, I decide to mix up some blue, a very light blue. And this is going to be my background again. I'm picking out some more stencils and as you can see they all have like an animal print look. This is more zebra like I guess you might say. And I'm going right over that blue background. That one didn't come out so good. So now I'm starting with the yellow background. So I'm doing it this way and not, you know, with the one pull because I don't really have to worry about registration or anything because um, these are all getting cut up into little tiny pieces. So I'm here I'm pushing the yellow through. I don't even remember why I was doing this. I don't remember if it was because this is the full I think that's what it was. Full yellow on top of the lighter yellow, and I was hoping it was gonna give me a subtle pattern. I don't think this one came out that good, but I probably can still use it. But you could see it's very subtle. And then it left more paint on the plate. So I decided to put down some um, quinacridone nickel azo gold and pick up what was left with the ghost. And this I think is actually perfect. It's going to give me just enough texture that I need for certain parts of his body that are the kind of that um, color. So now I'm trying to mix up another light yellow. Like I said, I want to have some variations when I'm working on this.
and this is um, I think this might be green gold I will put it in the in the notes below green gold is another one of those super transparent colors and um, that one was okay just okay <laughs> so I'm mixing it with some yellow I'm still as you can see it's still in there and I'm hoping that maybe this one will be better I think that one works too so now I love these stencils by the way they are just really cute and I, I needed that smaller pattern because I'm going to be cutting these up pretty small these these are going to be small triangles in my mosaic so now I need some purple for his beak and I have this um, I'll put like I said I will put the color in the description below but I mixed a little bit of um, I think it's called uh, it's either prism violet um, or some other violet but it's a darker violet along with this lighter lavender color mix the two together just so I wouldn't have like this solid color um, and I was trying to get a specific purple and so I'm just checking to make sure it's dry because that was not see where see where it's going that little bit of purple right there not very much but super small area and that reddish color is going to be perfect for the tip of his beak so again I'm checking to make sure that it is dry and I'm putting that prism violet over the top again I don't think it's prism violet I think it's another one I will put it it's a liquitex and it's a much more expensive paint and it reacts different on the plate it is a little stickier and it takes a little bit longer to dry so I have to really be patient before I lift up the paper and of course I have no patience so I left a lot on the plate left a lot there but I just needed a sliver of that purple so I think it'll be okay so I'm mixing a nice dark blue And I'm picking up the as a background sheet and of course it picked up some of that purple so that's going to be perfect I could probably use that in that purple area and I'm moving fast because I just want to want to see where all of this is going and this is the green gold and I'm laying over that sheet that was so-so from earlier but a little too wet I think And now I'm going to put down some, I think this is the violet oxide. And because I had that ghost. And that subtle pattern is what I'm going after. And the transparency of the green gold mixed with this more solid color it really works well. So I know I'm going so fast that you can't even see them, but I will show them all at the end when I'm finished. So now I'm going to mix some, I think uh, this might be like a cobalt blue with some white. And then I mixed it on the other side with phthalo blue. And I'm picking up through the stencil. And some of these are just pickup sheets.
I'm picking up the ghost with a piece of deli paper because I just want to clean the plate. And so now I'm, make, I'm mixing a really light blue. And I'm going over that. Like I said, I'm trying to get really subtle colors. That one was nice. So now I'm just trying, you know, to mix it up a little bit and just do a little random brayering here. And then I'm putting it over that last sheet. And this came out really, really nice. Very pleased with this. It has many areas that are beautiful. So I'm doing alizarin crimson. I'm going to do a little bit, something a little bit different. We have a lot of that blue still on the plate. So I'm mixing some yellow in here. A little blending. So this one really came out beautiful. It has some real surprising areas that I can use in many places of this toucan. Okay, so now I decided I don't have enough purple. <laughs> I want to make sure I really covered because once I start doing the collage, I don't want to have to stop and do some more jelly printing. So I started with a um, that dark purple again as just a background and then I'm going to go lighter and I'm using this lavender that I have. This paint I got from Joann's. They had like a special and then I put some titanium white in there because I want to have variations in the color. And I want those patterns to be much lighter than the darker background. And so I have some paint there. I decide to put down some alizarin crimson. I added a little bit more because it wasn't dark enough or adding enough coverage. And this, this sheet also is absolutely beautiful. I absolutely love the way this came out. It has a lot of variation that I can use. So here we go. Here are some, the, now, See the tip over there in that sort of rusty color? This is going to be perfect. And I could probably even use a little bit of the one, the colors in here. Absolutely fantastic grunge going on. <clears throat> Same thing with this. So I have a variation that I can mix it up in that little area. So then that little sliver of purple, I could use some of that. And then of course the blue area, I have some great blues going on in there. That area up there that I was talking about that was sort of a light blue or light bluish green, it's got yellow variation. I managed to get a couple, see how beautiful that is? So even though there's not like real defined pattern, I think it's going to be great mixed with this other sheet. I think that, and that's kind of the biggest area of his beak. So I'm, I needed to make sure I had enough there. Then of course for his body, I think this is perfect. And then also that little um, orangey area there around his beak and also around his uh, underneath the yellow area. So I have definitely enough yellow and also a little bit more purple. Now here's where we got, this was challenging this part, but I love this and I can't wait to see how this is going to look. We have those variation in colors where I, that I could use for highlight areas. And it'll give him sort of an iridescent kind of look. 
without using iridescence. So I think I have enough with those sheets to give me the variations that I need. You know, some really dark areas, especially with, um, I have one more. This one has some real blacks in there. So I have all the variations that I need to, to define his body. Especially, I love those little colored areas because I didn't mix my paint well, which is actually intentional. <laughs> I was going for that same look again on this one. So I think it'll work. In those highlight areas, I can use some of those light colored uh, areas and that will give me that definition in his body. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted you to see sort of how I think ahead, how I plan ahead when I'm going to do something really special, which is my usual style of collage, not just a torn paper quick collage. That I do for practice and sometimes use it in backgrounds for other things. But when I'm planning a specific thing, like, uh, like this painting you see behind me, or my smaller birds that are on wood panels, then you'll see I have to really think ahead and make sure that I've got the colors that I need. So I hope you enjoyed getting into my head a little bit and um, enjoyed the actual jelly printing process. And I will see you next time. So don't forget, create, inspire, and share. Take care. Bye-bye.